Today we are going to speak about oh, I need to return the Google. So today we are going to speak about typology on different levels at different levels, and we are going to start with typology of phonological systems. A little bit of revision. when we start. And we're going to start with the concept of the phonological language, uh, phonological level of language. So among those levels that form a complex structure of language, the phonological level should be called the first. The basic unit of this level is the phoneme. In essence, a phoneme is an abstract linguistic unit uh, that combines all those common features inherent in real sounds, the backgrounds in which it exists or is realized. So, for example, one uh, of these common signs may be the explosive nature of the grounds or nasality or some other phenomenon. At the same time, the phoneme as the basic unit of the phonological level of the language performs two very essential functions for communicative purposes. The first one, the constitutive function, which consists in the fact that phoneme are the necessary building material for unit uh, for units of the morphological and other levels. So without phoneme, no morpheme, no word can exist. And the second function is a distinctive one, um, which uh, or differentiative, uh, which make it possible to distinguish some morphemes from others, some words from others, which is also essential for the purpose of communication. Uh, thus, a phoneme uh, can be defined as a class of physically similar and functionally identical uh, sounds. From this definition of a phoneme, it is clear that uh, the phoneme may sound differently under different conditions. For example, let's compare the Russian phoneme A in the pressed stress position sounds like short a in words like akno adin and so on and the english phoneme, phoneme t uh, before the consonant loses its aspiration uh, such sounds which are varieties of one the same uh, class of physically similar sounds are called allophones or variants of a given phoneme so I know that you have studied all this material from the course of theory of phonetics. This will be just a short revision. So phonemes um, in uh, uh, morphemes and words are combined into syllables, which can be viewed as a natural unit of speech stream segmentation. Along with phonemes and their variants, which are called segmental units, according to their ability to be used in separate segments of the ch uh, speech chain, uh, the phonological level includes over segment, super segmental units, which are usually understood as stress and intonation. So, Uh, we're going to speak, uh, speak about selection of indicators to establish a typology of phonological systems between, for example, any two given languages. So considering the phonological system of individual languages, we can easily make sure that uh, some quantitative functions um, in the, someone is still coming in the, just a moment. 
I can't ignore. Of course, we can be checked at any moment. So that quantitative uh, functions of the phonemic uh, composition, they are large enough. So in some cases, the number of consonant phonemes is extremely limited. For example, in Samoan language, it has only nine consonant phonemes. Uh, in other languages, uh, the number of consonants reaches 60 or even more, as, for example, in the past language. Uh, the number of vowels can also significant. For example, Swedish uh, has 17 simple vowels, uh, while Italian has only seven. In some languages, the consonant system is dominant, characterized by a variety of consonant phonemes uh, and um, relatively small number of vowel phonemes. Such languages are called consonant languages or languages of the consonant type. In other language, uh, languages, there is a, a fairly diverse system of vowel phonemes, for example with a limited number of consonants. Uh, such languages on language composition of phonemes are called vocal languages, all languages of the vocal type. The division into languages of such type can be considered as one of the main criteria for the typological characteristics of languages at the phonological level. So, as Isachenko, who studied the typology of Slavic languages, um, includes Russian, uh, he wrote that Russian has 35 consonant phonemes. Please don't uh, miss them with uh, letters. Uh, and Polish, for example, has also 35 consonants and the number of others. So uh, among the vocal languages, Isachenko considers the Slovenian languages uh, in which there are 21 consonant phonemes with 18 vowels and the serbo Croatian language uh, and in the phonological system of which there are 24 consonants and 11 vowels phonemes and so on. So the phonemic composition of individual languages differs among themselves, not only uh, quantitatively, but also qualitatively. Um, so in some languages, there are two incidental phonemes, as for example, in English, uh, modern Greek, uh, literary Arabic language, Bashkir, and so on. In Danish, instead of two incidental phonemes, there is only one phoneme, B. In a number of languages, noisy consonants of a D back row are presented, as for example, in many uh, Turkish languages, in Arabic, and so on. So there are languages in which the vowel system is represented by a small number of vowel phonemes uh, that do not have any correlates. As for example, in Russian, Belarusian, Ukrainian, Georgian, Uzbek, and so on. In contrast to these languages, a number of languages can be named where uh, there is a long short vowel correlation such as a Sanskrit, Arabic, and some uh, Germanic languages. It follows from what has been said that the inventory of phonemes, vowels, consonants, their number and composition can be recognized as a general criterion for the typological characteristics of the phonological system of languages, which are compared. Uh, the structure of the phonemic inventory is 
is important for establishing the typology of the corresponding language. One of the components of the structure should be considered the quantity and quality of the positions and correlations. Uh, phonological oppositions refers to the opposition of two or more phonemes in order to identify the presence or absence of any sign. Oppositions are binary when we speak about two elements, ternary or tertiary um, when we speak about three elements and group. If opposed by two, three, and whole group of language units. In this case, uh, for example, phonemes um, in Russian language, b, b, t, d, pair phonemes can be compared, and this will be binary opposition. In English, uh, the same pair phonemes, f, v, s, z, and so on. Or it may be a tertiary or ternary opposition as. B, D, B, or a group of frown to vowels as opposed to a group of back vowels, and so on. So the um, phonological structure uh, of, for example, Arabic language is characterized by a binary position of simple and emphatic stop phonemes, uh, which we do not find in many other languages, such as. English, German, and Russian. Uh, phonological opposition so, is closely related to phonological correlation. That is the presence in the corresponding phonological system of two phonemes pairwise opposed to each other according to one feature, when all other features coincide. For example, correlation in hardness and softness, b -b. voiceness and depthness, b -p. nasality, non-nasality, and so on. So the next um, feature we're going to speak is neutralization. So neutralization is associated with the features considered above opposition and correlation, which is characterized in um, phonological terms by the removal of a feature that distinguishes one phoneme from another in a binary opposition. For example, the neutralization of the phoneme D at the end of word in German is completely unacceptable and impossible in French and English. For example, red in German is a will, but uh, rode are wheels, uh, haben to rise, but hop raised. So typological analysis of uh, phonological systems involves the establishment of not only qualitative but also quantitative indicators uh, which can be achieved by determining the strengths of phonological opposition. This term was proposed or introduced by uh, Linguist Zhuravlov, and we are going to look at the formula. So the strengths of the phonological opposition can be represented in the form of the formula f equal to m multiplied uh, to d divided on m, where f is the strength of the phonological opposition. Uh, D is uh, the number of uh, discriminating position, uh, that is strong position, N is the number of neutralization position, and uh, small n 
the number of pairs that make up this opposition. So Jorav Lyov proposed to read this formula as follows. The strength of the phonological opposition is directly proportional to the number of pairs opposed in a certain number of strong positions and inversely proportional to the number of weak positions. Uh, the development of electroacoustic equipment provided researchers with the opportunity to obtain uh, special spe spectrograms of sounds and sound patterns, which made it possible to measure and obtain the characteristics of individual formats and make up the formant structure of a particular language. Using electroacoustic research methods, Jacobson, Fant, and Hale developed a system of binary distinguishing features of individual phonemes, which by their generalized nature can serve as topological indicators of phonological systems. Uh, there are two classes of signs. Uh, signs of sonority, based on differences in the amount and concentration of energy in the spectrum and in time, and signs of tone based on different characteristics of the edges uh, of the frequency spectrum. In the group of signs of sonority, the following pairs of signs are distinguished according to the principle of opposition. So we're going to give a great duration. So signs of sonority. We have nine groups. First group, vowels are unspoken. Second, consonants dissenting one. Third, compact and diffused, uh, characterized acoustically by a greater concentration of energy in a narrow central region of the spectrum, which is accompanied by an increase in the total amount of energy in its temporal extent. In terms of articulation, compactness corresponds to anterior artic articulation and diffuseness corresponds to uh, posterior articulation. The fourth group, group stands for unstressed, uh, stressed and unstressed, which is characterized by the presence of sufficiently distinct resonance regions in the spectrum and an increase and respectively decrease in the total amount of energy and its length in time. So tense phonemes are also called strong or forties, while non-tense ones are called weak or lazy. Uh, or linis. Yes, what is linis, the uh, standard opposition? So voiced and deaf or voiceless, uh, which is due to the presence and absence of harmonic vibrations at low frequencies. Nasals and turning, so characterized by the fact that uh, the available energy uh, spreads to a wider frequently band and nasal hormones appear, uh, as a result of which a nasal resonator, resonator is attached to the oral cavity. So discontinuous and continuous, a sign due to the acoustical lack of sound which is associated with the rapid, rap, rapid spread of energy 
over a wide frequency band and by sudden switching off or switching on the sound source. Sharp and sharp. So that is due to the acoustically higher noise intensity. Glottalized, non-glottalized, characterized by a higher or lower rate of energy expenditure in a given period of time, uh, which is articulatory expressed in the uh, presence of closure of the glottis. Uh, in the group of tone features, uh, the following features are distinguished. We have three of them. So low high, uh, that is a concentration of energy in the lower and respectively higher frequencies of the spectrum. So peripheral phonemes with a larger size and less dissection of the resonator alveolar and label phonemes and central phonemes with a small resonator size like palatal and dental phoneme. Phonemes are distinguished by articulation. So the second is flat symbol. Flat phonemes have some downward shift in comparison with simple ones and weakening of some of the upper frequency components. In articulation, it's okay, we are ready for this. So, uh, in articulation, flat phonemes are characterized by uh, velarization. That is the additional rise of the back of the tongue towards the soft palate which gives the consonants with the so-called hardness. Sharp and simple. Sharp phonemes have some upward shift in comparison with simple phonemes and an increase in some of the upper frequency components. In articulatory terms, sharp phonemes are characterized by palatalization. That is an additional rise of the middle part of the tongue to the hard palate. The above 12 uh, distinctions or differential features are not found in full in any of the known language. Um, as the author note, uh, the compatibility or incompatibility of the speeches in the same language or in separate phonemes is largely determined by the laws of implication or prediction which are universal in nature and allow for the uh, stratification of phonological systems and reduce their diversity to a limited set of structural types. Uh, from the above, it follows uh, that uh, the differential feature of phonemes should be taken into account as a, a criterion for the typological characteristics of phonological systems. So, for example, uh, the differential features of the phoneme T in Russian can be formulated as follows. It is consonant, dental, occlusive, non-nasal, noisy, voiceless, non-palatal. Uh, differentia uh, differential mm, signs of uh, phoneme T in English are summed up as follows. Uh, consonant, vela, occlusive, non-nasal, noisy, deaf or voiceless with aspiration and non-palatal. Uh, so comparison of different features of these two phonemes, Russian T and English T, 
clearly shows the acoustic and articulatory difference. The Russian phoneme t has a sign of dentality. The English phoneme t alveolarity and strong aspiration. So, um, for the typological characteristics of phonological systems, uh, phonemic distribution and the frequency of use of a certain class of phonemes in comparison with other classes of phonemes are important, which determines their place and shape the phonological system of the corresponding language. So, for example, in many Turkish languages, the consonant O and R, which is the part of the plural affixes lar, ler, are widespread. In other languages, such as English, Greek, Spanish, Arabic, incidental phonemes, such as um, F and V, are common, which are absent in other languages. Finally, uh, the complex of features that are part of the criteria for determining the typology of languages at the phonological level should include those functions that are performed by certain classes of background and the structure of the language. So, uh, in uh, Semitic languages, uh, the main lexical meaning of the word is carried by consonants, while vowel uh, perform a distinct grammatical uh, function. For example, um, plural, the root F and J N in the form of Finjan is a cup. In singular, phonogene uh, cups in plural, the root FRRS in the form FARAS means a host in singular, in the form APRAS, a host means plural. Um, collateral FATAHA, he opened, FUTIHA, he was opened, as in voice of voice. Uh, in the Turkish languages, vowel phonemes not only uh, do not carry any grammatical function, but on the contrary, serve as an ex excellent means of distinguishing meaning. For example, uh, Turkish uh, gül, lake, gül, flower, gel, kam. So the, the material considered allows us to uh, formulate the following indicators as phonologically determining. That is, uh, the quantity and quality of the inventory of phonemes, the quantity and quality of oppositions and correlations. Uh, so the third case is of phoneme neutralization the fourth, the strength of the opposition, the fifth, distribution of phonemes and their frequency, and the sixth, functions of a phoneme in the word. All these indicators uh, will make it possible to draw a conclusion about uh, the typological nature of the language in terms of its uh, phonological organization. This confirms the opinion of Tarsuyev, who believes that for determining the typology of phonological systems, the most important is the system of phonemes, including uh, differential features and the ratio of subsystems, such as vowels, consonants, and so on. The frequency characteristics of phonemes and their functional load. So that is the end of our first lecture. We are
So we are going to meet once again in 20 minutes. Don't be late.